Welcome to Hims TV. I'm Laura Lovett. I'm the managing editor at Moby Health News. Today, we are so lucky to have with us Brian Yarnell, who is the co-founder and president of Blue Stream Health. Thanks so much for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me, Laura. I'd love to start off if you could just tell me a little bit about Blue Stream. We founded Blue Stream, uh, my co-founders and I, about five years ago now. And we did it because at the time, you know, we wanted to make it easier for patients to access remote physicians. You know, five years ago, a lot of this was inside the hospital where we were thinking about better ways to take out those people in the middle, the you know, people at switchboards that connected people in real time to remote specialists. Um, so we built out a platform to do that. And a lot of what we focused on was making it really easy to raise your hand and request a certain type of specialty and really easy to deliver operationally at scale those clinical resources. Um, you know, what we hadn't really thought about at the time was as care starts to migrate outside the hospital, how we were blending these networks of in the hospital, at home, and then third parties that are also providers. So it's, it's been a really interesting journey. Yeah. And five years seems like a very long time in the world of health tech. Uh, what have you seen change since the time you founded the company to now? Obviously, COVID was somewhere in there too. Uh, so what's changed? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. You know, I mean, unlike most health tech startups, you know, we, we were self-financed, we bootstrapped the company. You know, my co-founders and I have all had previous exits in health tech, so we kind of knew what we were up against. Um, but, you know, we, we were probably a little bit surprised that the uptake in this type of platform was really slow, right? You know, we, we found ourselves five years ago, four years ago, even, even three years ago, evangelizing this notion that you need a platform that can connect patients remotely to specialists and do it in a way where it's not a heavy lift to create these complex workflows, right? You know, five years ago, people said, that doesn't make sense. I don't know why I'd need it. Um, you know, we grew the company. We signed on some really good, innovative partners and customers, people like MedStar Health that kind of got that this was where care was headed before COVID. And then when COVID hit, you know, we, we just saw exponential growth. You know, we, we got to a good place in 2019 where we had great team members in place, great technology, great initial customers. And when COVID hit, you know, we, we saw the uptake for these types of solutions grow exponentially. Um, but it wasn't always smart uptake, I would say. You know, sometimes people were just throwing things at it, saying, I need telehealth and not, not really thinking through the long-term implications. Yeah. Could you talk to me a little bit about adoption from the end users? So patients and providers, what were the hurdles and now what's working now? If you think about it, a lot of the initiatives that we deal with are moving healthcare towards, you know, towards real-time delivery, you know, not a scheduled session necessarily, but more like a brick and mortar experience where you've got multiple people involved in the delivery of this virtual care. And you've got those people, <clears throat> you know, interacting with human beings on a, on a more real-time basis than, you know, make a request for an expertise and get it next week. So, you know, real sense, you're changing the way people go to work every day. And that's, that's a real struggle, right? So, you know, the best organizations we deal with on the provider side have really internalized that this is the future and figured out how to appropriately staff up and train and prepare providers for a world where, you know, they've got to be ubiquitous, not just in a facility or, you know, can take a walk down the hall if they need to get a cup of coffee, right? You've got to be keyed in, you've got to be able to deliver 24 seven. And that's, that's a big change. Um, on the patient side, um, COVID helped a lot, honestly. You know, we, we, tried to stay away from at-home initiatives and directed consumer initiatives initially because we were terrified about training consumers on how to use telehealth. And you know, one solution we put in place was just make it dead simple, right? Try to make it adaptive, try to make it adapt to the, the level of technical expertise and healthcare literacy the customers have. Um, but when COVID hit, you know, what we saw is that we were pleasantly surprised by the willingness and the ability of the, you know, the consumer at large to really get into these kinds of systems. Now, value-based care is a really big question out there and, and how that's going to impact health. How do you see telehealth fitting into that paradigm? A lot of the, the more sophisticated customers we have, right? If you think about what Bluestream really is, is we are a platform as a service to implement your own virtual care platform. And for things like ambulatory care, that's great because you can continue to get paid. Um, but where we see most of our customers migrating to over time um, is the value-based care world right? Putting providers in place 24-7 and opening up multiple digital front doors that either they control or people upstream like the ACOs and the managed care organizations control, where you're actually getting access to care 24-7 for these patients 
that's quality care. And it's really a paradigm shift. You've got major healthcare organizations like here where I am, New York City Health and Hospitals, is putting providers on the platform 24-7 because they don't want those folks walking into a hospital. And it's directly integrated into ET3 programs, 911, and then kind of horizontally into partner organizations that all share this goal of keeping healthcare costs low while improving access to care. And if you think about it, I mean, that's what value-based care is about, is, is making this stuff easy to use for consumers so they don't go around you and go to alternatives or wind up getting transported and making it operationally efficient to deliver it at a massive scale. You know, the other big trend that's sort of been big in the conversation is the consumerization of healthcare and that patients just want more out of their care. How do you see this impacting telehealth or health tech? Yeah, it's got, it's got to be simpler, I think, right? The consumer, consumerization is a great word for it uh, because we've seen things from, I'm not going to name names, but you know, traditional healthcare IT organizations that push patients into a portal or try to get patients to download an app. And, you know, I, I've spent a number of years building product and looking at trends and, you know, guess what? Nobody wants to download an app, right? So, you know, the consumerization of it is now you're putting the, you know, the power in the hands of the consumers to choose the pathway into care delivery that they're comfortable with. And if you think of it in that context, you've really got to make some accommodations in terms of how you deploy these front doors and how you let consumers work through the healthcare continuum once they get in that front door, right? It's not always about scheduling an appointment with Dr. Smith and hope he shows up on time. Sometimes it's about serving ads or putting a kiosk in a homeless shelter, right? Engaging patients where they are, how they want to be engaged, and then controlling that pathway in a way that starts to really feel like a brick and mortar experience, but do it outside the hospital. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I feel like I learned a lot today. Yeah, no problem. It's been great talking to you.